Joe knows taxes. Joe knows the market. Joe knows social security. Joe knows income planning. Joe knows pickleball? No. This is Joe Knows Retirement. So you've worked for 30, maybe 40 years. You're now in a part of your life called retirement, or you're getting ready for it. And you've accumulated all these assets, and you're asking yourself, what now? I've got enough money to make it for the rest of my life. I've got enough to do everything I want. What, what should I do with this now? What is the purpose behind the money that I saved all these years. So that's what we're going to talk about today is this purpose conversation that we love having with our clients as, as we go along and really just try to hold them accountable and really get them to think about their money in a different way. Uh, I just don't think enough people think about money in that way. Uh, they just kind of think about, you know, how do I save it and save it and save it over time? They never really think about like, why are they saving it or what is it going to be used for? So we're going to really break that down and, and really discuss what it looks like, you know, to have a conversation that we do with our clients of, how are we going to plan for the money that we've saved all these years? So uh, some of the questions that we really like to ask people, so these will be just good brainstorming questions for you. And uh, we're going to go through those questions there and then just give you some ideas and some pro tips of like, hey, how can you add more purpose to your retirement? What could that look like? And obviously, we're not here to tell you what to do. We're just trying to give you ideas so that you can think of how you can use your money more wisely. And so maybe that means spending on, on things. Maybe it means spending on services to make your life easier, uh, whatever that may, may look like for you. Maybe it's spending it on health. Or, or maybe it's giving more money. You know, a lot, one of the biggest joys is, is, is giving, right? And so uh, we're going to talk about all those different opportunities so you can try to get a clear picture of what you want to see done because if you don't do anything with it, someone's going to spend it. And it's either you, it's you're going to be your kids, give it to a charity, healthcare, taxes. You've got you to pick someone that's going to be spending it. And so you've got to make that decision uh, if it's going to be you or someone else or what is it going to be. So let's first start off by just talking about those questions that I mentioned. Um, you know, one thing we always just try to get our clients to understand is you can't take that money with them is, is ultimately like I'm saying. And so we will ask them, if money were no concern, what would you do? And you really get people to open up with that. I mean, think about your personal situation. What would you do if money weren't a concern? Would you go buy the big, big old boat? Would you go on that vacation? Would you spend more time? with your grandkids and retire a little earlier? Well, if you've done your job and you've saved enough money, all of those things may be realistic. So instead of having it on this big old bucket list that you just a big hope and you never do it, what fun is that? What are we working so hard for? What are we living for if we can't enjoy it? And so those are the things that we want to consider and, and, and actually make those, you know, if money were not a concern, what could you do? Well, what if I told you that money would not be a concern if you did that? And so for a lot of our clients, so I'll be asking that question. I'll be like, yeah, I want to want to go on that worldwide trip. I want to go travel around the world. And I'm like, okay, you'll need $50,000. If we take out $50,000 from this account, your goals of retirement are still at 100%. <laughs> and they go, oh, well, what do I do? Well, you go on the trip if you want to go on the trip, right? So just understand that it may not be a concern. Money may not be necessarily as big of a concern as you think at this point in your life if you've done your work to this point. So a lot of our clients are deals and savers. They've done a great job accumulating. And so we're able to show them that, hey, if you go do this goal that you have, it's not going to affect your financial goals. You've got enough to go have the fun and, and do those types of things. So ask that question and, and you'll get a clear picture and, and understand. And then do the work and see if, it, if it's realistic or not. And I'll be pretty frank, we definitely tell clients that there's some things that they can cannot do or maybe they need to work a little longer. And so it just depends on your situation. But if you're in a great situation, it could be a reason to do those types of things. Uh, another question that we'll ask is what could you spend money on to make your life easier? And we'll get into some of those ideas here, but what can we delegate to make our life easier? And so some tasks that we, we think of are if you do like to travel and, and maybe you hate to plan travel, Maybe you hire a travel agent and you're probably not going to pay that much more for a travel agent versus doing it on your own, especially when you think of all the time it would take you to plan it. Remember, they're experts in what they do. And that could be a consideration to just make traveling less stressful. A lot of people uh, traveling stressful and that's why they never do it. And so uh, I know I know the, the quote too, to go off a little off topic here, but they say more people plan their vacations than they do their retirement. I think that's true. 
And uh, so let's start planning our retirement more and have someone else plan our travel would be my encouragement for you all because I think planning the retirement is a little more important. Uh, but anyways, that's a good joke for you. Uh, but other things are like having someone else help with, you know, delegating uh, just chores around the house, cleaning the house, doing laundry, cleaning dishes, taking the trash out. Right? If you have enough money, then it may not be that costly to have someone come do that for you. And if it can remove that much burden, that much stress and buy you time, maybe something you're interested in. And so, you know, mowing the lawn. I know some people enjoy mowing the lawn. So if it's a task and it's a hobby that you enjoy, don't delegate it. E e even if it does take you time, if that's what you enjoy doing, you don't want to get rid of tasks you enjoy to do just because you can pay someone to do it, right? Um, you know, landscaping is another big one. You know, maybe you're, you're getting a little older and you're not wanting to do all that burdensome work. Maybe it's time to hire someone to do that. And, you know, it's not like you're going to pay an arm and a leg to, to get the landscaping or mow the lawn. Um, typically it's going to get done at reasonable price by experts that do it really well and do it every day. So, um, just some considerations there for you and, uh, you know, fuel the economy, you know, spending money is, is good for the economy if you want to look at it that way. Right. Uh, and then also just, you know, change in oil or car maintenance. I mean, we have a lot of clients who, you know, they have a million dollars or more and they still change their oil. They still do all this stuff. And we ask them like, why do you do that? And some say, I really enjoy it. Like I talked about, and that's totally fine. We kind of let them go. We don't bug them if that's the case. But some of them are like, I don't want to spend the money. You don't want to spend 20 bucks to go down the street and get your oil changed, um, you know, and save you a couple, you know, uh, save you an hour to get all the, the stuff you need to do it and get all, you know, messy and, you know, now have to clean up and all that. So, uh, again, I'm not telling you not to change your oil. I'm just saying, you know, is that really what you want to do? You know, or small things like car details. So we had a client, for example, you know, they, 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 uh, they loved keeping their car clean and just made them feel really good. And so they would always talk about how much they loved getting their car detailed because they didn't have to do any work and the thing was brand new. And uh, so that maybe that can even give you some more joy stepping into a, a, free, a clean car every time and um, getting what you need. Uh, we've got some clients that you know basically cook, uh, get someone to help cook meals or maybe they do like meal delivery services. And again, you're just that whole concept of buying time is extremely important if that's something that is of value to you. Um, you know, haven't even like, you know, we've even had clients that go the step of getting interior designers to come make their home feel better. Um, you know, sending out birthday cards for family and friends. I know some people have done that. They've just paid someone, Hey, can you, can you just help me here? Um, they really want to do it, but maybe they just don't necessarily have the, the time to do it. Um, you know, or just like, you know, personal assistant get, to get things done. Maybe you're a very bu busy individual having someone do a lot of your chores and tasks, uh, can be extremely important. So um, again, you know, those are just some things that you could do to make your life easier if that's your goal. And then, uh, you know, a fun one we always ask clients, another question is, what have you been putting off doing because of cost? And some may, some may say that's the windows or, you know, the, the, the projects around the house is typically what we hear with that question. And uh, I'd encourage you again, if you've got the money to do it, quit putting it off, get it done, and, uh, you know, you'll be better off. Um, with it moving forward. Another question we ask is, um, again, just on travel. I mean, you know, not all retirees love to travel, but a lot of people we work with love to travel. One of the best advice I've gotten from a client that I very much value is do your traveling while you're younger because the order you get, the harder it is. And so I would, you know, use that advice for you all too as well uh, to make sure you can get the most travel out of your retirement years. Um, do it, do it the earlier while you can, especially when you're most excited and, and most, he most healthy. And so we'll ask them, what trips do you want to go on upcoming? And this is a good one for me because I love the brainstorm about travel and I love travel and I go all over the country and always try to do a, you know, two to three big trips a year. And so, you know, you'll, you'll get the fun. I want to go to Iceland or I want to go to Spain or I want to go to Greece. Uh, you'll hear all these fun stories and now you say, okay, so what's stopping you? And they go, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I need to go do this. Um, so hopefully that can encourage you too, that if you really want to go somewhere, now's the time to do it. Uh, just make sure it fits within the financial plan and you've got enough to do it and you'll be good to go. Uh, another question we ask is, would you like to do something for your grandchildren? And what would that be? Uh, we've got a lot of clients who they love their grandchildren. Um, you know, I think they, uh, it's one of the biggest joys it seems for that generation is having the grandchildren that they can uh, not only mentor, but love and be there for and, and see them through. And so maybe that means you take your grandchildren on a fun old trip. Uh, maybe it's to a national park. Maybe it's to, you know, the museums. Um, maybe it's just spoiling them to death, right? Uh, you know, maybe it's setting up a college fund for them. 
you know, now that you can set up a college fund and uh, they can use it as a Roth IRA if they never use it for college up to a certain limit, then maybe that's a value to you uh, to make sure they can be on a, a step forward as they start their career. You know, I, I know that's something that is extremely important to my family is just, hey, you know, we, we, we find that um, there's a lot of value in having a business and having, um, you know, that type of impact. And so we would want to see our type of family generational, you know, over time to, to be able to do things like that. Um, and so whatever your value is, you know, you can align that with helping your grandchildren or maybe it's even your kids right now. Maybe you want to help your kids now because when you pass away, they may not need your money at that point, but maybe they really need it now is something we see often. So, you know, given why you're living versus wait until you pass away um, is something, you know, you could look at as well. Um, another question we ask that really just gets to the root of like why people – avoid having these kind of conversations or avoid thinking about this stuff or just maybe never do some of the stuff we've been talking about is what is money like growing up for you and when we ask that question we really get in the inside of people's mind of like how do they think about money everyone has a different worldview or a different way of thinking about certain things and so money is one that is very far off and it's it, it, it's basically you know with money like who's your mentor like who showed you how to be good with and wise with money you know, for me personally, my parents were so wise with money. They were just so diligent and they just taught me such great things moving forward. I mean, I always remember when I earned money, I was able to spend some, I was, I had to give some and I had to say, I had to, you know, spend, spend, give and, and save, right? The three things. And so it taught me that, okay, it's important to spend money, but do it wisely. It's definitely important to be generous, right? It's not all our money. And it's important to making sure that we can uh, save it for the future uh, and be able to provide ourselves more opportunities, more freedom, more control over our, our, our future. And so if you never had anyone show you that, how are you going to learn? You, they don't talk about money in school. They don't talk about it. You know, unless you do research, you're not going to find anything about it. And most people don't even want to talk money. It's just so private, right? You're not going to talk about it with your friends or family. And so um, really just getting to the root of what was money like growing up and then just trying to work through that and just trying to say, you know, like one of our clients told us, I'll remember this, is um, they said money growing up was very tight because they came from a single parent home and they didn't have much. And so for them, money meant safety and security. And so for them, it's really hard for them to spend money because they're afraid of losing that security. They've done a great job saving, but they don't want to lose that security which I definitely understand that point. So with someone like that, we are encouraging them, hey, you can spend money if you want to, but if it doesn't give you joy, hey, it's, it's totally fine being frugal and being um, you know, safe with your money. It's totally fine. It's, it's your retirement. It's what you want to do. So for them, it actually gives them more joy not to spend money because of their, their past. Um, so we always try to encourage them and try to uplift them and say, hey, you could if you wanted to. Um, but you know, we're going to plan for how you want to plan. So I know how hard it is to spend money for some people. And I probably know that because I'm one of them. Again, I was grew, growing up to be very frugal and, uh, you know, I just don't get a lot of value out of spending money. I mean, I just, I'd rather give money or I'd rather, um, you know, I, I just don't, I just don't get fired up about spending money. Um, and so I'd rather have experiences or, or give money and be generous with it. And so, um, you know, depending on what that is for you, again, we're not telling you to go spend your money, but we're telling you to do something with your money because it has to be used in one way. Money is a tool to be used how you want it to be used. Okay. For her, it was, it was protection. It was safety. Um, for others, it may be thrill and excitement. Um, for others, it may be to be generous. Uh, again, you just have to choose what that is for you. Um, another thing I'll mention here is, you know, you're looking to use money for your health. Uh, health is wealth, right? You've probably heard that term before. Um, I'm, I'm very into health. I'm very into, I, I do a lot of different, um, you know, workouts and running and biking. I've done an Ironman before. Not to say that's good for your health. It's probably terrible for your health because um, I was hurt for that for many, many months down the road. I would not encourage anyone to do an Ironman, uh, but it was a lot of fun. And I, I guess I can say I'm an Ironman too, so I can, uh, I can be prideful with, with that. Um, but anyways, with the, the health is, Hey, maybe you pay some money to go get a massage. Maybe you see that chiropractor every month. Maybe you get a personal trainer. Maybe you need someone to um, hold you accountable, but also maybe you're not necessarily sure what to do when you work out or how to do it. And what if that can add years to your life? 
Is that going to give you more joy if, if that's the case? You know, what if that massage can just really relax you and make you feel a little better throughout your week? Or that chiropractor, now you're not work, walking around all crooked, right? Um, another thing we've seen people do is get a nutritionist. Uh, maybe you, you want to lose weight or maybe you want to, you know, be healthy, more healthy. The nutritionist can make sure you just know how to eat. And I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know how to eat healthy, so um, that could be a really big value, especially up front, and then they can kind of teach you what to do. And again, you know, not only add years to your life, but add more exciting years to your life, right? Um, so you can actually enjoy things and not have to worry about, ah, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can do that, right? Um, you know, personally, I've got an infrared sauna at in my house. It's one of my favorite things I've ever bought. Um, and I get in almost every day and it's just really good for, for my body and uh, makes me feel a lot better. So I feel like I'm more productive at work. I feel like I'm more relaxed, you know, when I go to bed. Um, so again, it's just things like that of, of hey, yeah, maybe it costs a little bit. But what, what's the actual value of it? And what is the goal with your money? Is your goal with your money just to be saving and, and build the biggest barn? Or is it to actually, uh, you know, use it to enjoy it and, and be able to be a good steward of it? Um, again, we kind of talked about this earlier, but, you know, to just cap off the podcast, I'll talk about just giving, right? Um, we've kind of talked a lot about spending the money. Um, but what about, like, giving? What if, what if you've got more money than you need and you're not going to need it anymore and you've got your financial plan set? Um, you know, we talk about giving to grandkids, kids, but what about charities? And so we'll ask clients, what, what charities are close to your heart? And they'll start to open up about, you know, I really like, um, you know, my church, or I really like, um, this, this, uh, charity that helps with, um, inner city, it helps kids, you know, who are in the inner city who are, um, you know, have, have rougher, um, you know, childhood and they just need more opportunity. Um, you know, there's so many different opportunities with charities depend on what, where your heart is to really make an impact. And I like to think about it this way too. If you are a diligent saver and you have a lot of saved up is, you know, just giving, let's say for example, if, if you had $10,000, like where, let's just start there. Where would you give that $10,000? And then I want you to think what would be the impact if you gave it there? You know, if you gave your, like, for example, I, I love, one of my things that I love to give money to is a youth basketball com, um, organization here in our community. So I, I played for this organization, I've coached for this organization, and I feel like my money is, is, is very well used there because it can help kids, you know, have an opportunity to maybe play basketball at the next level and get a college scholarship. Um, it can help them teach them life lessons through the game of basketball. And so I feel like if I gave that $10,000 to that organization, well, that could pay for you know, up to probably 20 kids to pay for their, that, their, everything they need, you know, the, their uniforms, their, um, you know, the, the games they play and all the tournaments, all the practice facilities, all the insurance they have to get. And what, what kind of impact is that? You know, what's the, the ROI, what's the rate of return on that? I mean, how much joy can you get from something like that to see the amount of opportunity you can get there? And so what we often say, I mean, 10,000, I'm, I'm just using an example, but that is very significant. To a, to a charity, and if you leave, you know, ten thousand or hundreds of thousands of dollars to somewhere, I mean, you're talking about the type of legacy where they're probably going to put your name somewhere, right? Uh, they're probably going to build a, they could even build a statue of you out in front. As I told a client that one time, and they're like, "Oh my goodness, that'd be really neat." Um, and so you see it all the time, right? But but just that lasting legacy, and also to to leave it behind, and something that you feel feel passionate about, right? Um, so something that I feel personally passionate about, I feel like, you know, I, it's not my money. God owns everything. Right. Um, and so if that's the case, then, Hey, where's my money, money best used for the kingdom. And so that's something personally, you know, that I'm convicted of. So whatever it may be for you, you just got to plan the right way. And, uh, you know, if you are going to give the charity, just understand the, all the tax benefits in doing so. And that making sure you're not leaving any money on the table is something that I would definitely encourage you of. So, um, those are just all things to think about there. So I'll go ahead and wrap up there. And, uh, you know, just to summarize again, you know, your money's got to go somewhere. And so you've got to choose what to do. And it can make a significant difference in your life. It can make a significant difference in someone else's life. Or it can make a significant difference in this world. And it's all up to you to decide how you want to steward that wealth that you've accumulated all these years. So there you have it for another episode of Joe Knows Retirement. Have a great day. Since we do not know your specific situation, none of this information can serve as tax, legal, insurance, or financial advice and may be outdated or inaccurate. The information comes from sources believed to be reliable but cannot be guaranteed. This content is prepared for educational purposes only. 
If you need advice, please contact a qualified CPA, attorney, insurance agent, financial advisor, or the appropriate professional for the subject you would like help with. Peak Retirement Planning, Inc. is an Ohio-based registered investment advisor and able to offer advisory services in Ohio and in other states where registered or exempt from registration. 